So here's the plan today. I finished dialing in the truck uh, this past week. It's been raining the last couple of days, so I need to wash it again, uh, which I'm excited to do to see how the, how the Kamikaze does. Uh, but the trailer's been sitting out here since I took the S2000 down to get finished, uh, was that three weeks ago? So Michelle's gonna kill me. Uh, so I've been meaning to make this video. I need to get this done, get the trailer out of here, back to the, to, I guess it'd be original OGHQ, uh, and then I'll eventually be moving everything from original OGHQ to the new OGHQ. Uh, but what I wanted to do today was do a video series of me figuring out how to set up the trailer guiding system that the new F-150s have. Uh, so my previous gen Raptor didn't have any system like it. Uh, hopefully this will help me as uh, uh, as I suck at uh, backing up trailers. So hopefully it'll help me get the thing into the places that I need to get it. Um, but I'm going to take you through the process of setting everything up, getting the trailer hitch done, uh, and uh, and then you know setting up the trailer. I'm going to pull it out on the street, uh, and we're going to do the the process of setting everything up. You have to measure, put a sticker in place, uh, get all the cameras to set up, all the all the you know all the measurement, the distance between the axle and the and the back hitch, and all of that stuff. So the so the truck knows how to calculate how to back the thing up. Uh, so we're going to work through that series here today. So let's get started with setting up the hitch. I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, and we'll also talk a little bit about what I'm going to do to the truck uh, to help with towing. Uh, I know trap Raptors aren't, aren't built for towing, but I have to drive. I tow very little. I drive the truck Raptor around all the time. I want to, I'm going to improve the rear suspension so I can load more in it. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about that as we go through this process. All right, so let's get our hitch installed. It has a, uh, a tongue weight measurement on it. Uh, so to give you an idea how much weight is on the tongue and then you have a locking position where you can adjust the height of the trailer. And so I have it set up specifically for for my Raptor, my previous Raptor. So we'll also check the height and make sure everything makes sense. So I have a locking pin so that I don't have to worry about anybody stealing my expensive aluminum trailer hitch. So I did all kinds of research when I first, first bought the trailer, which trailer hitch to get. Uh, oh, wait, here it is, it's a waysafe.com. And this is the, I believe, the six inch drop option. And it's a two inch. So I have a two and five sixteenths inch ball. I think they, it comes with both, if I remember correctly, for my two inch collector here. And so when you lock that in, now no one can, you know, can remove it. And then the way that the, the system works, there's a pin that holds the ball in place as well. So it's locked here. So it comes with a key to lock this into position so I can set the height. Uh, and then the inside, so when you unlock this, there's a pin that you can uh, grab to remove the ball if you need to change out the ball. But it's a 10,000 pound rated uh, uh, trailer hitch. So it's more than adequate for what we're doing with this. Uh, the, the trailer, I think, loaded up the trailer weighs about uh, about a little over 5,000 pounds with either my GT3 or my S2000. So I have a just a little locking thing here, which I'm sure you could easily knock off with a sledgehammer if you wanted to steal the trailer. But so you have this little pin thing that locks, little master lock thing that locks it mainly locks it onto the truck. I also have a lock that goes on top of this if I ever needed to. And then I have a, a wheel lock, the club that goes on, on the wheels as well. All right, so I'm gonna back the truck up so that we can actually, let's raise this up a little bit so I can make sure I get it on there. Cameras on these things are pretty darn good. Get this thing right into position. I have to move my chalk. I have a little plastic wheel chalk. There we go. There's all the water. Unlock in place. Yeah, I might want to raise this up a little bit. There's no car in it. Tongue weight is less than 200 pounds. 
that might actually make a difference. We'll deal with that at another time. All right, so we'll put our lock back in place. So I at least have a deterrent. So I have it locked on the, on the ball, locked on this so I can't lift this, and I have it locked on the, on the truck. So put our six pin in, or eight pin, or whatever this thing is called. These, they, uh, I don't know, someone taught me at one, at one point to, rather than mounting this this way, you always want to pull it this way in case it ever snaps. It'll snap that way rather than upward. Make, made sense to me, so that's what I do. This would be our, our brake solenoid or our brake release that if the, you know, the trailer disconnects, it'll lock up the brakes. And then we have our other side safety cable as well. There we go. All right, so now we're going to pull it out on the street and make some measurements. I'm on a pretty darn level surface here, and I think uh, I think I'm going to raise. I'm going to pull the, the the hitch up, so I'm going to move it up a notch. I think that it'll settle a little nicer doing that. Okay. And just take the little key. All right, so we went up one notch higher. Let's see how that sits. I think that's gonna sit a little better. Yeah, I think that's a better position. Added a little more weight to the tongue. But the trailer and everything looks a lot more level. So we'll, we'll try that out now. I've got a pretty much unloaded trailer, so. I don't like to drive around the wheel on, so I don't snap this wheel off. I'm gonna go run in the house. I forgot to bring my tape measure. You need to pull out the, the F-150 quick start guide, uh, which I was wondering, I'm like, man, I guess the dealership forgot to send me the stickers. Well, just to cue you in, all the stickers are in the back fold of the Pro, Pro Trailer Backup Assist Start Guide, right? So what I figured we'd do is kind of walk through this and figure out what needs to be done. So, you know, step one is to position the trailer, which I have, so we position it nice and straight. Um, and then step two, we're gonna go in and we're gonna start the process of adding a trailer. So I'm gonna go set up the trailer part in the inside the truck. So that'll be step two. And then step three will be, um, will be to work on positioning our sticker. So let's go jump in the truck and walk through this stuff. And then we'll come out here and get our sticker placement done. All right, so here's our quick start guide. So we go to step one. Step one is to hitch it, right? So we're positioned. Step two is gonna be to start it up, right? So we hit the start button. And it says once we started the setup, you know, we don't want to shut off our, our truck. So let's go to towing. Everything's running properly. And we want to go to trailer setup. Click the OK button. And then we're going to go add trailer. Let's call this our Trail X. So hold the button down, that doesn't work. Trailex, like that. I think that's how, how it looks. There we go. Okay, so our brakes are default. Surge brakes. Braking le lo effort low. Uh, conventional. So we want to set up blind spot. Yes. Okay. Is the, is the width less than nine feet and length less than 33 feet? Uh, yes. Enter the trailer length. Trailer length is 23, you know, 24 feet. Boom. Yeah, that wasn't, okay, here we go. Add pro trailer backup assist, yes. Drive 
forward to straight. Okay, so let's put it in drive. Even though I am straight, let's drive forward a bit. Trailer straight. Okay. Shift back to park. Boom. Now, place the sticker on now. Okay, so we're gonna leave the truck running. So now we need to go to the sticker placement. Well, it says to leave the truck running, so I'm gonna do this fast so I don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning. So in the back of the manual, there's this card, which I just got all wet. There's the card and the sticker. And so the sticker placement has to be between seven and 22 inches from the center of the ball, right? So I got some IPA here so I can wipe this down. So here's our ball. So there's seven and 22. So that means we're gonna put it right here, so we're good. So we got the right position here. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe this down. And then, I hope this sticker works here. So I'm gonna put a little IPA in my towel just so I get good adhesion since there's this little center void, this little center gap here. We're going to take our sticker I'm going to put it right here. I need to clean this area a little better. There hasn't been anybody down the street in hours, and now I'm out here messing around and figure figures. All right, so we're going to put our sticker. Good old diamond plate, gotta love it. All right, so there goes our sticker. And there's a shiny side and a not so shiny side. So let me make sure it's not supposed to go on a certain way. Flat, dry surface, entire sticker must be visible. Seven and 12, 22. Okay, now once that's done, we'll go to step four. To make sure, perfect. good adhesion there so I think our sticker is going to be good. All right so let's make our other measurements so the first measurement is coming from A the horizontal distance from the license plate to the center of the trailer hitch. They're going from plate center which is ten and a half inches and the next the horizontal distance from the center of the ball hitch to the center of the sticker. Okay, so it's going from here to here. 17 and a half. And I think we we're supposed to stick with half measurements. Yeah, half measurements. So we're 17 and a half. And then C is from the rear view camera, the, the distance from the rear view camera to the center of the sticker. So there's our camera, it's 41 and a half. And now the last measurement is from the horizontal distance from the tailgate to the center of the trailer. So I'm gonna go to the center of the axles or the center of the axle if it has two or more. All right, so we're gonna go tailgate to axle. And then there, that's good. All right, I don't know if this needs to be exact science, but 186 and a half. Now we got all those measurements. Now we go back in the truck. So here's our measurement card. So just to recap the measurements. So A was the distance from the plate to the center of the ball, which was 10 and a half inches. And then B, B up here, was from the center of the ball to the center of the sticker, which was 17 and a half inches. And then C was this, you know, the camera the sticker, just 41 and a half inches, 
and then the last one we just did was 186 and a half, right? All right, so we're gonna go back to our guide. And we're gonna go, okay. The horizontal distance, so this was A, which was 10.5. Bingo, okay. Measurement B, 17.5. Okay, C, is 41.5. Boom. And then D was 186. 187 who gives it the round up. Boom. 10.5, 17.5, 41.5, 187. Okay. Confirm. Boom. Okay, it's locating the sticker. Please wait. Boom. Located the sticker. It's now circled. Let's see how they circled it on the camera. That's cool. So I said yes. Measurements are saved. Assist is complete. Let's just check our manual here. Okay. So it does the circle. And looks good. Setup complete. Okay. So now we need to calibrate the system. Okay, so that's saved. So you need to drive the vehicle straight forward between 4 and 24 miles an hour as directed. The information shows that it will eventually show calibration is complete. So we're going to drive straight forward to calibrate. So we're going to drive. I'll leave my camera on the side of the road there. Now it's calibrating. Stop. Shift to reverse to activate. Press knob to exit. So our calibration's done. Now we can go drive around and turn it around. All right, cool. So we're all set up. So all you do to turn the back up on is you put it in reverse. All right. And press the button to turn the trailer backup assist on. And it has the camera set up here. And then you put it in reverse and you kind of turn the button. Yeah, pro trailer. Okay, so we do the trail X. It does the does the backup assist. And then it takes over my steering wheel. And then I can kind of do my thing. And as the wheel turns as I as I turn the knob. I'm gonna take the trailer over to the garage, so we'll we may do a uh, I'll, I'll do a see if I can get it in there without uh, without me having to disconnect it. It's also neat that it gives you status if your lights are working. And so if I turn the lights on, it shows you the trailer lights are working. Trailex trailer, and it'll tell me how many miles I put on it. And then you can choose to turn the tow on or off. So it changes the gearing. And there's an indicator light right here, whether you're towing or not. All right, so let's test this out here. Oh yeah, got it. I think this backing thing might actually teach me how to do this. Okay, check this out. Let's go straight in. This is good news. If I can actually back up a trailer. Check this side. All right, so I'm gonna come straight back. We got a little tight on this side. <laughs> the 
check that out. You know, I want it a little closer to the left wall anyway. Other way. I think we got it, folks. Check it out. Wow, this really did make it a whole lot easier. I've never backed this thing into the into the thing. So, all you real men were right. You just need to learn how to do it. All right, I'm gonna back it up a little more. And we're done. So with anything, you have to, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And so all I do is just adjust this little knob Everything works out great. You can see, you know, it doesn't really show you the back of the trailer, but all I do is turn, you know, the knob and the wheel, the wheel follows suit. So, a little bit of a learning curve, but now I have the trailer backed in the way I want. Got it all set up. I'll hitch, I'll take the hitch off. I'm a little bit crooked, but, you know, I backed it right in, right up next to the wall. It took me like two tries now, and I think next time I do it, I can roll this sucker in perfectly. So what I'll do is I'll put the, I'll put the ball down and I'm good to go. Or the wheel, the wheel down. Yeah, I need to move the trailer a little bit that way, so I'll put the wheel on this. Conclusion is, this little trailer backup assist this thing makes it a lot easier for a, even a hack like me. <laughs> Now, you know, I've gotten better at backing the trailer and you're just just practicing, just learning which way to turn the wheel, but the uh, it's just much more intuitive turning the trailer assist thinger, little knob, you know, instead of using the, um, the steering wheel. So what a, it's a cool little feature. In the trailer here, I have a little NOCO battery charger set up so I can plug it directly in. Not have to mess with it so the battery stays charged. You know, I'm really surprised at how much of a difference that made in ease of backing a trailer. But anyway, that's the, that's the process of doing it, backing it in, and it took me several tries to get it lined up exactly against the wall like I wanted but I think next time I do it I can roll the sucker in there and without even getting out of the truck certainly if you had a spotter it'd be even easier so anyway thanks for watching and uh, I'll keep making making videos as I mess with stuff in the garage force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor.